We'll call the meeting back to order. Dr. Bullock. No. You're uh, looking pretty sharp today. The county employee, you know what the <laughs> standards are. <laughs> Quite high, evidently. <laughs> All last week I was in meetings, and the one that struck home, and it seemed to be most pertinent to our county, based on the problems that other counties have had, is a class called Essential Records. And because of what happened in Parkersburg with the tornado, Iowa City with the tornado and subsequent flood, and then in Cedar Rapids with the flood, <coughs> these people lost a great deal of county essential records. Talking to some of the uh, people here in the courthouse, we are in the same boat. If something should happen to this building, God forbid a tornado takes out this building and it's going to hit this one, it's going to run across the street where we store our backups. Uh, we're going to have some problems trying to uh, find out what it is our essential records are and how are we going to reproduce them. And there's a number of things that, they, uh, that they've talked about, but I would suggest, uh, quite honestly, most people don't know what essential records are. And they talk about prioritizing, and uh, obviously the most essential is that what would we need during the first 24 hours if we had some type of an emergency. And it, the, the, they go on and on about a number of different things, but the suggestion that I would like to make is that the uh, county, uh, the heads of the departments do uh, an analysis of their risk of their essential records and then basically uh, an assessment, a risk assessment. And the problem is, or, number one, identifying them, and number two, uh, keeping them in a relatively safe place where, they would, where we would have access to them, that department, if they needed it. But talking to some of the other entities in the county, I'm not really sure what an essential record is. And if there was a problem, how would they retrieve them while they're on my computer? Well, uh, I'm a perfect example. I've had hard drives crash on me on computers all the time. So I have got the carbonite that backs up everything so I can gather it from them. But my concern is, is that <clears throat> if something that should happen to us I, don't, I doubt we're going to be in a flood situation, but if pipes should burst in the basement or something like that, are we going to be able to uh, get to our essential records that we would need? So um, that's just a so where do you go, you know, where, if you're a department head, where do you go to find out from other counties or other entities that have done something about this? Do you have a well, I mean, basically, I mean, I could sit down with department heads and go over what they, uh, it was kind of like a train-the-trainer class where they wanted us to come back and, first of all, assess, do we have the necessary backups that we need? And to talk to people about um, what happens if somebody retires. Uh, what they know, is that gone? Or a lot of what they knew goes with them. So uh, basically there, there is a PowerPoint presentation that talks about, first of all, identifying your essential records. And then do an assess of the risk. Now, in our case, we're not going to have a river that floods and wipes out our county. But we could have ice storms where we lose electricity, are we gonna, which we've already had. We could have tornadoes. So you talk about uh, looking at, number one, what we consider would be essential records. The next thing we do would do is what they call a risk analysis. What, what risks are, the, are out there that might we might lose these records because of that? I don't know if you would put tornado or ice storm as high, but at the same time, these people who have lost those records uh, have had a heck of a time trying to reproduce them. 
and Homeland Security recognizes that, and they're saying, okay, emergency coordinators, you guys go out and uh, at least bring this to the attention of the supervisors and department heads, and uh, where they go from this, you can do nothing, or you can start mitigating where we identify it, and uh, how do we want to protect and secure, or are the records secure enough where somebody can't come in and get rid of them? If this building went, would Ben lose any important information on cases that are going on right now? Uh, so those are all things that they brought up that uh, you might consider essential uh, birth certificates, uh, these type of things. Do we have uh, backups of any of that? And do, are they all in one place, or do we have off-sites? So talk to Tina about what, what was going on there and downstairs in the basement, which could be subject to a flood, but the backup tapes are high. So uh, the other question would be, does whatever catastrophe might hit, does it hit during work hours or does it hit when no one's here? Chances are when no one's here, I mean, because we're only here 37 hours. So. Um, we're we're doing some disk backup as far as every night. Yeah, so that, that but I, I guess my question goes back towards essential records, and we have a hundred and some years of of records and old documents. Well, one of the things that they consider essential is that how difficult would it be to reproduce if all of a sudden you didn't have these records in front of you? Well, that's that's where I was headed. You have all this old paper stuff that we're filing in safe. The the computer things, you know, as as far as having an off site disk backup, I mean we are addressing that. But my question comes to what level of importance do you put on a hundred hundred and fifty years of of all these old documents and, and what do you do about it? That's not for me to decide. I think that's for you guys to Well I, I'm saying well, I, I guess you know you on your current day-to-day -day things and your computer stuff, I think we're in pretty fair shape. But all this other stuff... Well, that, that to me, that to stuff find, couldn't be reproduced. Right. If we lost it. That's my point. That would be essential. Uh, so, somehow, so, I mean, if it's all in paper, do you want to make copies of that, scan that and put it to a computer and then provide it to some off-site source? Uh, yeah. When I was looking at the, that... Land trans or family mm -hmm. land transaction or that old book. We're at a point in time now where there's a lot of people that are looking for century farm acknowledgement. Sure. That was, and you know, if we didn't have that, there's no way you could prove century farm accomplishment. Well, you know, if you're going to address this issue, you almost need to have somebody, an advisor or somebody puts out proposals probably. What's the most economical way to back this? All the deeds and mortgages and, right. and legal descriptions and, and the assessor's office, all that. And there's probably there's probably it's companies that recorders of this as well. You know what I mean, Jim? That yeah. There's probably people that, that, and then, that then you gotta figure out, you know, prioritize because well, exactly the, the and they of, consider priority one would be something that you would need in their example priority one is something that you would need in the first 12 hours of an emergency obviously those records would not be considered priority one they would be considered essential priority two they said what you would need in the next 24 to 48 hours now these are things that now something let's say wiped out this building okay but at the same time with those records that we're talking about, if this building got wiped out, would we have a record? Do we have a backup of it? And that's what Parkersburg, Cedar Rapids, and Iowa City, and let alone Joplin, uh, all of these entities have had serious problems with we've lost essential records, and now it's a monumental task to try and get that information back. So, do we mitigate and try and figure out to alleviate a monumental task, 
okay, my job is to bring it forward and to recommend that the department heads do some type of an assessment and a risk analysis. Um, a, a lot of our old documents are vaulted, correct? Mm -hmm. And so those would be relatively solid, but, but you have, um, like on, on the ground floor level, anything that might be stored in the auditor's office, but a lot of that's vaulted as well, and, and recorder's office is vaulted. Is that water? They're, they're not, that vault is not waterproof, and it's certainly not fireproof, because there's a window in there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't even think it would be safe from a tornado if it would suck that window out. Half of those books would go right out with the glass. And so that those are, but those two are on the ground floor. The recorder and the auditors, all the history of Sac County is in basically those two vaults. Along with what's vaulted downstairs. Yes. We just got a full-time job to get all that. Several, quite a number of years ago, there was a group of people that came, and I think they were affiliated with the church in Salt Lake City. And they came and scanned all of the old birth and death records. And of course, that's all part of that genealogy thing now. You know, so I don't know what that has to do with with uh, preservation of, of what's here now, but um, it, it never was continued. You know, when they did what they did, they left. And from that day forward, nothing's been really memorialized in any other way. But, um, when they suggest off-site or what do you call it, um, essential records preservation, right. how, do you, how far away do you store it? Well, I mean, <clears throat> they, they used an example. They had a safety deposit box of, of a lot of uh, backup records in Iowa City. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were on the very bottom box when they flooded, so they lost those out too. Now, if they were up six feet high, would they have preserved them? Yes, in that particular case, but in the safety deposit box is where they were. So when, when you say off-site, I wouldn't say across the street at the annex, but maybe in one of the banks that and insist on safety deposit box being up high or something like that. Um, those were the examples that they used of, of saying off-site. They also have companies, as an example, with my computer and all of the EMA documentation. Carbonite, an off-site place, backs it up every 24 hours. Well, okay, and they're, I'm sure my little computer compared to what goes on in this courthouse is minuscule, but there are companies that will do that and keep that uh, as an off-site, okay. uh, as opposed to just saying, okay, I'm taking this disc and putting it across the street. Uh, I, the, the, the big emphasis is on, number one, most records are not essential. Uh, we could get along with that. That was one of the first things they said. They, they are considering that, uh, by their definition, <coughs> the first thing they asked was that, uh, what is essential? What, and most common reaction is, well, all of my records are essential. And it comes to find out that about 10% of the records are really essential. So what's identified in that 10%? Did they say what that would be? Oh. Essential records are necessary for emergency response, are necessary to resume or continue operations, protect the health, safety, property, and rights of residents, would require massive resources to reconstruct documents, the history of communities and families. Those are the, the five things that they put in as quote unquote essential records. Well, that pretty much includes everything in my goal. <laughs> I mean, that's the history of South County. I suggest we get rid of your window. <laughs> <laughs> We've mitigated it. There you go. My job is done. You're done. <laughs> well, we just, uh, we just addressed the fire alarm system. We did that. 
Have any of the old records been microfilmed at all? No. I don't think any of the land records have been microfilmed. The recorder's oh, office has microfilm. Yeah. yeah. The recorder's office has done. Yeah. yeah. It's so on microfilm, but yeah. then to find the microfilm machine. Well, that works. You know, yeah, that's right. the next thing. We'll I did sure do we have check them into that. place to continue mm -hmm. taxing people. Well, sure. I mean, what if you lost that? You know, there's a lot of overlap between the assessor, the treasurer, and the report. And I'm not... Well, even the Walters we have to figure out. in the treasurer's office, I'm only, they're shut up at night. They aren't shut up, are they? Oh, yeah. The, the treasurer's vault is. Is it? Yeah. And we shut the doors on my vault. I mean, not... The locks don't work on those, but yeah, we do shut the those. Are shut. We do shut those steel doors. So that, but it's still... Um, I mean, we did make an effort towards the fire part of it, but uh, that still doesn't take care of water and, and uh, or, you know, a natural disaster or well, hazardous material. You know, we we'll go out to the secondary roads property. We build a bunker, a glorified basement, you know, twelve-inch walls. And it's never going to flood. I mean, that property floods most of North America, so you know, right? You know, the fire and, and tornadoes. So. We own the property. It's, it's somewhat removed from this. We just build a bunker and to have you know, backup records. Now, the only suggestion, this is something else, is that that have a controlled environment in the bunker sure. as far as humidity goes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we've got generators, backup generators, right. dehumidifiers. As, as I sit and think about this, I mean, you've got... You've got two different, two different thoughts, two different courses of action that you might take, and that is to build, to do something like that, to preserve the current documents you have, or to try and make a duplicate. Sure. You, I mean, you, you you have two different ways to address address the thing. Um, be interested. You know, the third. Next week when we're in Iowa City, you know how we often visit with other. Like we could talk to the, well, yeah, talk to the guys in Iowa know, City. See how they, they do in Carroll County or Green County. Or what did you find out, Tina? There is other counties doing it. I just got that because I contacted which, what, Tyler. Which route are they doing, Tina? The, the duplication I don't, or the... I just got the email this morning. All he told me was there are other counties. Because I asked him about the external backup, you know, sending the backup somewhere else at night, like his carbonite. Um, and he said there are other counties doing it. But he couldn't tell me right offhand which counties it was to contact him and ask him what they've been doing. Well, the the computer part is the is the easiest thing. It's sure, just all the oh, it's, yeah. the, it's the all the, the old documentation. That carbonite though, they have the servers might have to have something special. If you just oh. want to back up the servers, that carbonite. What I read on them, they want to update everybody's. Or you know, keep track of everybody's individual computer. Well, we really just need the three servers backed up. Yeah, but if everything they goes do down it. into the server, then that's all you need. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't address the other. No, it doesn't. Part of it. And, and that's that was the concern that these other communities have run. And I don't think that this is just something that we should address in the county. I'm going to bring it up at a commission meeting that our municipality should be considering this also. Um, but it, it, it doesn't address the fact that that was the big thing that they showed after the water was in the basement. These volumes were there, and they had to ship them all to Texas and go through that freeze drying process. Uh, and uh, that was one of the things that they mentioned that they were doing, trying to get those records back and then figure out a way of how we're going to reproduce these so that this isn't the only record. So well, Maybe, you know, if we have a department head meeting in the next 20, 30 days, that could be a discussion. Maybe. I can I can present a PowerPoint, a, a relatively brief one. Uh, the state uh, would be willing to come out and uh, make a presentation. I can make arrangements for that if you want the department heads to sit in on that. It was a seven-hour class. No, 
We'll, uh, we'll take your shorter okay. version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, <clears throat> you know, basically my job right now is I just wanted to get you guys aware that I think we are vulnerable in this area and uh, where we go is <clears throat> up to you. Yes, you know, the, along these lines, you know, from a strategic planning point of view, do we have any, if this thing would burn down tonight, you know, we know what our insurance proceeds would be, and do we have a, we don't have a plan of... All that does is replace the building, and the, you know, the equipment, the equipment doesn't replace the, I mean, it, if there was a way to reproduce it, it the insurance yeah. would probably cover that, but we don't have building and contents. Yeah. I mean, if, if everything, if all those books burnt, there'd be no way to, any amount of insurance. Could Ron, are you backing up yours on a daily basis? Secondary Ron? I don't think we do it on a daily basis. I think uh, she's, well, I think she's been doing it like weekly and taking one of those disc off segments. Oh, that's, that's just her computer. And of course, now that we're online with with payroll and and uh, claims, we don't have to back up any of that stuff out there because it should be back up here. The, the first argument to that would be what happened if her hard drive crashed on Thursday. Then you've lost that week's. Yeah, not if she's doing that daily. Oh, it's on secondary roads. Your all of your stuff. Our goes. payroll and claims go through here, so they're through the main here. here. Well, I know I'm talking about more of their business yeah. aspect of it, yeah. you know. I think payroll and claims would be relatively easy to reproduce, but uh, it's the other part. That was one of the things that they commented about, is that uh, you can have a person who retires or a person who has all of their information on a computer. Uh, that would be a technological loss if something happened to that computer. So... Uh, they're, you know, they're now again. If it's only a week, then you might be able to reproduce that week. But uh, if if it's all on a flash drive or something like that for the last year, that could create a problem. So, okay, that's basically <laughs> what I wanted to say. Jim, when we get back from the corridor next week, I'll get a hold of you and we'll talk about it and set up the department of Okay. Kind of work it around a okay. Bit. Yeah. Jim, on this uh, incident of command school, I, how many meetings? We have? only have eight. eight, and we need we fifteen. Signed up. We, we don't sign up. It's on a Saturday and Sunday, the nineteenth and twentieth. Okay. And I've got to know because I'll get a hold of them. I've got to. If if forward. they do not get fifteen, the class will be canceled. And right now there is a. Of November, yeah, right. I, I can do that. I'm in the next week. I'm going to be gone. But I need to think about it. What about you, Dean? No, I think I'm. I could sign us three up. I'll, I'll do that with the computer today. That'd be fine. Okay. Thank you. So. What class is this? Incident command IS 300 and IS 400. If uh, and. If you ever have to be involved as a decision maker for an incident, that's the one that you would be obligated. What to hour? What hours will those might be involved with it as county engineer? Well, FEMA one time said you're supposed to have. And I can't remember what level. Is it 207, 200, 200, well, 100 is as a department head. It would probably be 100, 200, and 700. But uh, and those you can take online. Yeah. What are your what are the plans for hours on those days? I believe it starts at eight to four, and typically they get done early. Um, on both days. Yes. Yeah. It's Saturday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. Oh yeah. If uh, we thought that because of fire departments, fire chiefs, police chiefs, and so on, because we would have it on if it was during a weekday, we would probably not get guys leaving work to come to this class. So now there are other classes in Clay County and Sioux County also that you, you could take like 300 here and a 400 or, or vice versa someplace else. Uh, there are other places that yeah, I've got being a list. Yeah. 
So if the Sunday doesn't work out on one, it might work out on another. But we could come on a Saturday and not come on a Sunday. Yes. Get yeah, because yeah, you have to register for the three hundred court probably. Yes. You can just do it Saturday and you're right on Sunday. Well, that, that means you get an IS-300. Realistically, look, to be totally honest with you, if you guys had 300, that's fine. But are you going to be incident commander with a hazardous material spill? No. Are you going to be incident commander with a fire or a tornado? No. Technically, you are the incident commander, but you would release, relinquish incident command to whoever has a lot more knowledge with regards to that. But they would prefer that you understand the concept of incident command as an incident commander. That's what 300 and 400 is all about. Literally, 400 is about joint command. So if we had uh, a foreign animal disease here, Pocahontas, Buena Vista, and Woodbury County, there would be joint command. That's all 400 is. If you, if you want my opinion, you, it, it, the feds will be involved on a joint command type thing. So, so the Saturday one is really the The Saturday one is the one that's most important. 400 is just joint command. All right. Okay. Sorry, I just don't understand. If we don't show up for the 400? Well, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Right yeah. now, there's only one person signed up for the 400. I think everybody literally knows. I just. I mean, they've been told what I just told you. I wasn't supposed to tell you that, but <laughs> I've been through them all. So. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. I know. <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. 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 Th